Hey, what's up guys? Hard Leg Joe here with the profile for my Speedroid Toolbox deck. For our monster lineup, we have four level 7 kaijus, two of the dark spooky ones, and two of the spidery ones. All I need is one mic, three hasty horse, two yo-yo, three speedy horse, three... One Beyblade, three D -D Duke, three Taka Tomborg, three Vintagarden Marble Machines, two Red Eyed Black Dice Dragon, and three Magnets. How do they work? For spells, we're playing three Shock Surprise, three Monster Reborn, but for Speedroids, and three Dark Hole with a side of Kaiju. This is a Go Second deck, so no traps this time. Our extra deck consists of one Wind Trishula, two Black Rose Dragon, but better. One Crystal Wing, two Not-So-Crystal Wings, one Gotta-Go-Fast Dragon, one Pointy Stick, one Upstart Goblin, one Big Knifey Boy, a King in Yellow, this Thing I Never Summon, one Great Fly, and two of the new Speedroid Link. The side deck I'll go over a little later. So as it says on the tin, this is a Toolbox deck, which means it has a non-linear win condition. Rather than try to build one specific board every time, you have a whole bunch of different boss monsters, and your job is to assess the situation you're in and summon the monster that best suits it. That's why this is a go second deck, because you want to see what your opponent is playing first and then respond accordingly. Now our whole extra deck is full of unique tools, but there are four in particular that you're going to be making more than any others. High Speedroid Kite Drake is a level 8 that can be made with one machined tuner and one or more non-tuners, and when it's synchro summoned, you can either destroy all other cards on the field, or negate the effects of all face-up cards your opponent controls forever. It's essentially Black Rose Dragon, except it's got higher attack, it stays on the field instead of destroying itself, and if your opponent sends it to the graveyard by any means, you can add one speedroid from your deck to the hand, so it adds some recovery on top of everything else. Next up is Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. This thing is classic. It's a level 8 that requires another synchro monster as its non-tuner material, negates monster effects once per turn, and doesn't afraid of level 5 or higher monsters. It's solid going first if you just want generic monster negation, or if you're going second and want to pile on a ton of damage. Clear Wing, meanwhile, is easier to make and has two negates, but those negates are much more limited in scope. It can specifically negate the effect of a level 5 or higher monster, as well as any monster effect that targets a level 5 or higher monster. So, it's only really good against decks with high-level monsters, but against those decks, it can be really powerful, especially when paired up with Crystal Wing, since it'll protect that from being targeted. Our final boss monster is Clear Wing Fast Dragon, which is another level 7 that has a quick effect allowing you to target any monster summoned from the extra deck, change its attack to zero, and negate its effects for this turn. This is just as easy to summon as regular Clear Wing, allows you to negate Lynx and Ixies that this thing can't, but it doesn't destroy, it just negates, which can sometimes be a problem. It's also got this bonus effect that if it's destroyed, you can place it in the Pendulum Zone. And its Pendulum effect essentially says you can Synchro Summon it out of the Pendulum Zone as long as you use a Speedroid Tuner. What's cool about this is that it's not technically an actual Synchro Summon. It's not coming out of the extra deck, so you don't need to put it in an extra monster zone, which is a great way to pile on additional damage when those are already full. So now that you know what we're making, let's talk about how to summon them. Most of the deck is speedroids, and most of the speedroids have pretty simple effects. If horse is normal summoned, special summon a speedroid from your hand. If yo-yo is normal summoned, special summon a speedroid from the graveyard. If marble machine X is normal summoned, search a speedroid from your deck. Terror Top also searches a speedroid from the deck, but does so if it's normal or special summoned, and if you control no monsters, you can special summon it. Our first tuner, Dice with Eyes of Red, also gets its effect when it's normal or special summoned, which is to target another speedroid and change its level to whatever you want between 1 and 6. Since this is level 1, it effectively allows you to make any synchro between 2 and 7, as long as you summon it alongside another speedroid. 
Duke Wellington, meanwhile, is a level 3 tuner that you can banish from the graveyard to summon any other speedroid tuner from your hand or graveyard. It's not quite as versatile as dice, obviously, but it makes our level 7s easy enough and allows you to extend your plays one step beyond. Our last tuner, and by far the strangest one of the bunch, is Malicious Magnet, a level 1 tuner that can't be used as synchro material except by its own effect. That effect is, if it's summoned during your main phase, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and synchro summon one wind monster using it and the magnet. This thing is why we play exclusively level 7 kaijus, because you can kaiju your opponent, normal summon magnet, and then use both of them to make the level 8 kite drake, which nukes the field. If you've got Den Den Archduke in your graveyard, you can summon this without using your normal summon, and then proceed to build an OTK from there. Now we do have one last main deck speedroid I didn't mention, and it's by far the best one of the bunch. Takatomborg is a level 3 machine that you can special summon from your hand if you control a wind monster. Uh, all the speedroids are wind machines, by the way, if you didn't notice. In addition, you can tribute this card to special summon any speedroid tuner from the deck, but you're locked into only special summoning wind monsters for the rest of the turn. This thing is what you're going to be searching off of Marble and Takatomborg 90% of the time, because it's a free monster for both Synchro and Linkro plays, and it special summons all your tuners from the deck, allowing you to toolbox anything with dice, get an extra summon with Archduke, or get rid of your opponent's monsters with magnets. 10 out of 10, not a garnet when played in actual speedroids. The only downside is being locked into wind, but I built the deck specifically around this by playing almost exclusively wind monsters. The only non-wind we have are just the kaiju, so make sure you do that before you talk a tomborg. Now, if you want to live dangerously, you can use speedroids to make all sorts of other non-wind synchros. Maybe put an actual Black Rose Dragon in here or Trishula for the memes. Just be really careful about Takatomborg and its lingering wind restriction. Speaking of restrictions, I should talk about the link. It's pretty good, it helps facilitate a lot of your plays, but when you use its effects, it has this restriction that you can only summon synchros out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn, which is why we pretty much just play it and Great Fly. Overall, this is kind of a weird one. It takes two wind monsters, has the good arrows, only a thousand attack, and two effects, one of which is really simple, and one of which is overly complex. The simple effect is, once per turn, during your main phase, you can normal summon an extra wind monster. Which is of course great, because most of your speedroids get effects when they're normal summoned. Its second effect is... <laughs> banish one wind synchro monster from your extra deck. Reveal two speedroids with different names from your deck, whose total levels equal the Banish Monsters level. Then your opponent randomly adds one to your hand, and the other goes to the graveyard. So basically, it's searching and graveyard setup, but you don't get to pick which, and it costs you a monster from the extra deck. This effect is why we play an otherwise mediocre card like Stardust Charge Warrior, even though this isn't really a big combo deck, because it's a level 6 wind which means you can banish it to search either your main man, Takatombro, or Terror Top, who, upon normal summon, will search Takatomborg that you can just special summon. A level 6 can also get you either Marble or Yo-Yo, which will respectively search Takatomborg or get him out of the graveyard if you've already got one there. We've also got this level 4 doodad that I never summon, who will either get you Dice or Duke if you really need a tuner. And we play this extra clear wing that you can banish for either Takatomborg or Yo-Yo if you've already used your one Terror Top. You'll either get Takatomborg straight to your hand, or you'll get the Yo-Yo who can summon back the one that you just sent. There are a bunch of other combinations you can use. The point is, you gotta be kind of thoughtful about what you pick with this effect. Make sure that you choose a combination that will leave you happy no matter what you end up getting. Assuming you don't get Ash Blossomed. Now everything else in here is just a tech card. Guitar is a level 3 wind pendulum, and when it's put in the pendulum zone, you can discard any card to summon Mike from the deck. My buddy Mike is a level 5 wind monster with 2300 attack, who bestows you with an extra normal summon this turn. 
which is just great. He's extra damage if you just want 2300 more on board, and him plus Den Den will get you Field Nuke Dragon, while also leaving you with an additional normal summon once the dust has settled. Likewise, this is why we're playing Hasty Horse. This is another level 5 wind, and you can special summon it to any column that doesn't have shit in it. It allows you to make easy link plays, you can summon Kite Dragon with Archduke Ferdinand over here, or you can just use it to go in for that extra 2k damage after all is said and done. That's pretty much it for the monsters, just leaves our spells, which are pretty simple. Slumber nukes the field and gets you a Kaiju, which you can then use with Magnet to nuke the field again if you want. Uh, speed Recovery is Monster Reborn for Speedroids. It extends your plays. Also, the next turn after it's used, you can banish it from the graveyard to grab a Speedroid from your grave to your hand. So it's a Speedroid Recovery. And Shock Surprise is essentially our Spell Trap removal. Like, it can destroy monsters and stuff too, but I mostly use it for Spell Trap removal. You can banish up to two Speedroids from the grave to target and destroy that many cards on the field. Simple and clean, barely has a cost at all. That just leaves the remainder of our extra deck, none of which is all that important, to be honest. Uh, I guess Kendama's kind of underrated. It's not a boss monster by any means, but it does piercing and allows you to banish a machine from the grave to inflict 500 damage, both of which can allow you to go for game when you're just not quite there. Uh, the rest are just neat wind monsters. Put them in at your own discretion if you feel like it. As for the side deck, it's mostly full of powerful generic cards that fit well enough into the deck, but I decided not to play them on the show because I wanted to focus on what the speedroids could do. If you want to play this competitively as possible, though, there's no reason not to put these in. This is a blind second deck, so if you think you're going up against meta, there's no reason not to run Ash or whatever hand trap you prefer, though I'm not sure exactly what you take out for it. Uh, likewise, Gozen Match is the perfect floodgate for this deck, since everything we do is wind. Uh, Twin Twisters is here because Mystic Mind exists, and also, we like Graveyard Setup. And Called by the Grave is to stop your Link Monster from being hit by Hand Traps, since that can shut down your plays in their tracks. Our remaining three cards are just good options to consider. Two of them are Wind Links that aren't out yet, one just has really good arrows and allows you to search most of your deck when it's destroyed. And the other one is essentially Light and Darkness Dragon 2.0, which can be good if you're going first. Finally, we just have Clock Wyvern, who you could also replace with Mecha Phantom Beast Tetherwolf. Both are wind monsters that summon a wind token when they're summoned, which allows you to make your link with just one card. I found it was better to have all speedroids for maximum synergy. Sometimes multiple of these could brick... But if you just wanted to strip this deck down to its barest engine, this and Tetherwolf are both great additions. Anyway, there's the deck. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to see the Speedroid Toolbox in action, you can check out the main video. There I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro for the better part of an hour, showing off how this thing works in action. Or if you're short on time, just check out the replay videos where I have a few quick duels set to music. Both should be on the end card and link down in the description. Until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs> <laughs>